All right, guys, so in this video, um, before I was going to go on, on to the next section, I was coming across some of the questions I used to use for old exams, and um, I went through some old MBMEs of the, of the stuff we'd already covered. So this is mainly about four or five questions that I think are really um, a little bit extra step, meaning that it, it's to the level that you might see on step one. I think that you will see on step one. So, you know, once you go to the question, maybe pause the video, see if you can work it on your own, and then, then kind of cycle all the way through it. But um, I think this, these, video, these questions are, are, are pretty, um, pretty close to what you'd see on step one. So I hope you like the video. All right, guys. So first question says, <clears throat> a 55-year-old man with history of atrial fibrillation and on warfarin therapy has a prothrombin time that has remained stable. Uh, which of the following curves shows most, the most likely change in prothrombin time following the addition of amiodarone uh, to their, not her, but to their, to their regimen? All right, and then you see this graph down here, and, and on the, the x-axis is just time. So starting here going this way, it's just time. And then obviously going this way is the prothrombin time. Uh, so it goes up going uh, in this direction uh, on the higher end of the y-axis. Then right here it says amiodarone was started right here. And then all these different changes, you're, they're saying which of these changes in the prothrombin time, like the prothrombin was steady, 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 and then all of a sudden when they added the amiodarone, it either went up this way, this way, this way, this way. You know, so either the, the prothrombin time went up or it went down or it stayed the same. Uh, so, <clears throat> what we know is warfarin is what? Well, first of all, take, take a second to think, okay, if they added amiodarone, how is that going to affect warfarin? And then how does that affect the prothrombin time? Okay, that's really where you, it's like a three-step process. And then in addition, you know how, you got to know how to interpret this graph. What does this graph really mean? So when I see this, I say, well, okay, well, look, prothrombin time was steady, and then all of a sudden something happened. So what happened? So... We know that warfarin, you know, works in that uh, the, the P450 or whatever, or it's or it's affected by it. So, but then we say, well, what is amiodarone that? And we know it's either an inducer or in the inhibitor class. And you have to know that stuff and have it memorized. If you don't have it memorized, you're dead in the water. So, if it's an inducer, remember that was that Queen Barb uh, steals fen fen and refuses greasy carbs continuously. The inhibitors were just were magic racks, right? So which one did amiodarone fall in? Well, it fell in, it was the A in, in magic racks. So it's an inhibitor of the P450. So if it inhibits the P450 and it inhibits the metabolism of warfarin, what's gonna happen to the warfarin levels? The warfarin levels are gonna go up, right? Because they're not being metabolized. And if warfarin goes up, what's that gonna do to the uh, prothrombin time, the PTT, on R is going to go up, right? It's going to go up. Because why? Because there's more warfarin around and it's going to make the blood thinner. And remember what we said, the higher the number, it's like in the clouds, the air is thinner, so the blood's thinner. Now, if the blood is, uh, anyways, if the blood is thinner, we might have a different reaction, but I don't want to surprise on the next question. So from this, we have to interpret prothrombin time and goes steady and then it goes up. Okay, it goes up, doesn't go down, or it doesn't go down, or stay the same. It goes up. So now we're left A or B, and then you have to decide when this occurred. With this, you know, when they started introducing this, do you think that it happened instantaneously, which is what this is saying? Like all of a sudden it was here, and then, then all of a sudden the, the, it jumped to a, this miraculous level, or was it something that was relatively kind of uh, logarithmic uh, per se, um, or in this steady kind of gradual increase? And then the correct answer: it's not going to all of a sudden jump. It's actually going to do or just this gradual decrease. So you should have at least been able to narrow it down between A and B, and then B is the much more, it's the, uh, the better choice of the two for warfarin, okay? But in this question, you had to know how to interpret a graph. You know, I, uh, I took this graph from an old um, NB, I just admit it, it came from an old MBME question. Um, so this is what they're gonna want you to know, how to interpret this stuff. But again, warfarin, they could replace this with any of the drugs on the inducers or inhibitors, you know, I, I could almost replace with any of those, and then if it was on this side, it might change it down in that direction, correct? Or it could be some drug that's neither, and it would do nothing. So you gotta know how to interpret that, okay? This one says, 
The graph shows the plasma concentration of a medication as a function of time after bolus dosing. So again, it's another one of these graph things. Down here you have time, okay, three, six, nine, and 12 hours. It's time and hours, so three hours, six hours, nine hours, 12 hours. And on the, over here we have plasma drug concentration. Here's one, two, five, 10, 20, and then uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.2, you know, less than one milligrams per ml. So you see this, this function here. So if the medication is administered continuously by IV, approximately how many hours did it take to reach a plasma concentration to achieve 97% of its steady state? Well, we know that when we achieve that steady state, remember how we do that, 100, and then we cut it in half, one half life is 50, uh, second half life is 75, um, then the, the fourth half life is 87.5, and then the fifth one is 93.75. Right, it goes up like that, and to reach that steady state of 97, we we'll probably have to go that one extra half life, probably that fifth, um, you know, that fifth half life to reach this guy. And if I did the calculations, it'd be like a, you know, 193, or let's just say 194, two, nine, 18, yeah, 97. Okay, so. With that, I gotta get to five half-lives. So then you, they didn't give me the half-life here. Where's the half-life? Where do we find it? It's in the chart. So if I look at the dosing concentrations, that's 20, that's 10, that's five, that's two, etc. So from here, it went from 20, uh, I guess it's picograms. It's hard to see, it's hard to see that, but it doesn't matter. It went from 20 to 10, so it went by half. How long did it take to go by half? From here to here, which was from zero to three, so from there to there is three hours. Okay, cool. From here, it's 10, and then the next one is five. So again, it went down by half, kind of the half life. How long did it take? Well, from three hours to six, that's another three hours. So we know that the half life of the drug, you know, how much it takes to go from half the current concentration is gonna be three hours. And if we gotta get to the fifth half life, how long is that gonna take? It's five times three, and you get 15. Answer choice D, okay? But again, this is a pretty basic question, but they took it the extra step to where they had to get the, um, you had to know how to interpret the graph here. Uh, so just be aware, again, know how to do the, the half-lives. You know, at some point, if you do them enough, you just have it relatively memorized. You gotta get to four to five half-lives, you get steady state, and from the graph, you got how much the half-life was worth. This one says a 57-year-old with atrial fibrillation has been taking warfarin and lisinopril for three years. <clears throat> Two weeks ago, after starting, after starting making a lifestyle changes, he develops the following skin discoloration. And if you can, I know it's hard to see. This was really in color when I used it as a, as a test question, and I'm sure I stole this off something. Um, but you can see this guy's arms, and there's just these excessive bleeding uh, all throughout, you know, bleeding, kind of superficial bleeding, right? It's almost like bruising bleeding when someone gets on their uh, hands, but it's pretty excessive in this. So they're saying this guy is on warfarin, he takes for a while, and lisinopril, he took him for three years, and all of a sudden, then he does something and it causes this. So what do you think caused this? This actually, when the warfarin levels probably did what? The warfarin levels somehow went up, because when the warfarin levels build up, that's going to be more warfarin around. It's going to thin the blood more. So my PTINR, um, PTTINR is going to go um, up. I got to say INR, right? And that makes the blood thinner when it goes up, like in the clouds, thinner air. So what makes it? What's going to build warfarin up? Is that going to be an inducer of warfarin or an inhibitor of warfarin? Well, it's going to be an inhibitor of warfarin. Okay. And then what are my inhibitors? I would go, oh, that's the magic racks, right? Um, and then, you know, again, macrolides, amiodarone, grapefruit juice, uh, INH, cimetidine, uh, ritonavir, magic, and then ritonavir, A for acute alcohol, cipro carbamazepine, uh, I'm sorry, cipro ketoconazole, um, and then uh, sul sulfonamides, okay? So again, metronidas, uh, macrolides, aminoterone, uh, grapefruit juice, INH, cimetidine, ritonavir, um, acute alcohol, cipro, ketoconazole, and the sulfonamides. So those are my inhibitors. So which of these is an inhibitor? It's sure as heck not St. John's wort, because that's an inducer. Valerian root, and this Dr. Oz stuff, those are just distractors. Catalin, just a vitamin. 
and then you got grapefruit juice, okay? That's my inhibitor. That inhibited warfarin made it bigger. If I have more warfarin, it thins out my blood too much, and then you get this discoloration. Um, but again, the, the step, step one is more like these last couple questions where there's this extra step involved, whether it's a picture interpretation, you know, just like you would have if you were seeing a patient that comes in, you're like, oh, this happened, and then you work backwards from that. This one says, a laboratory is conducting a study to assess the safety and efficacy and potency of a group of drugs before allowing the agents to proceed to clinical trials. Figure A shows the dose-dependent curves of four different drugs for the same class of medications, drug A, B, C, D. Which of the following is true regarding these medications? Okay, well obviously they work on the same thing because they have the same type of slope, right? And we talked about this a little bit yesterday, but down here on the x-axis, this is the drugs or how much drug is needed. And over here is the percent response rate. So you can see they all kind of taper up on the same up here, right? And what is this? Remember this, how high it is, is going to be your efficacy. Okay? And that's basically the maximal, um, maximal effect of the drug. Okay? No matter the dose. Max effect of the drug. Now, when we're talking, you know, Drug A reached this guy with only this much of the drug, right? Whereas, say, let's just say C, he reached that same a response rate, but he needed this much of the drug. So which of those two is more, more potent? Well, A is more potent because you didn't have to use as much of it to get that response, okay? So with this, you're talking potency left and right. Um, and then again, a potency by definition is just the amount of drug needed to produce a given effect. Um, so, which of these is the most potent drug? A. Which one's the least potent? D. Which one's the most efficacious? They're all the same, right? They all have the same uh, efficacy. So, looking at the answer choices, drug A has a greater efficacy than drug D? No, no, we talk efficacy, they're all the same, so it's not that. Drug D has greater efficacy, no, again, they're all equal efficacy. Drug A has greater potency than drug A, than drug D? Um, I like it so far. And then drug D has greater, no, definitely not that one. D is the least potent. All four have equal potencies? No, they have equal efficacies, but remember, all the potencies are much different. The correct answer, the only answer, is drug A has greater potency than drug D. And again, we'll talk more about how this interprets when it comes to antagonist, agonist, partial agonist, and such, but for now, if you, know, if you can understand efficacy and potency, uh, you're right where you need to be. And then this one. An experimental drug for Hodgkin's lymphoma is studied in a 70 uh, kilogram man. The dosing rate is 250 milligrams per hour and the drug's half-life is four hours. The drug distributes in total body water. Approximately how long will it take for the drug plasma concentration to reach steady state after starting the I intravenous infusion? You know, they gave us all these numbers here, you know, and, and, and you're so tempted to say, I need to use everything. But what do we really need on this one? They're just saying, how long, how long does it take to get to steady state? Four to five hours. We knew that, right? That goes to our whole thing and you know all that stuff. And you get to four to five hours to get to steady state. How long is the drug's half-life? Four hours. Okay, so how long does it get, get, to, get to, to get this? It's going to take it, you know, at the most, 20 hours. Answer choice C. Everything else was just smoke and mirrors on that. You didn't need that information to answer this question. So be real familiar with half-lives, know how to interpret it. And again, you go up, you got, you know, you got uh, 75, and then you have, again, you go up, go up and, and you, anyways, I should, it's 50, and then it goes to 75, 87.5, 93.75, and then I think that one was at 97 is the fifth one. Um, that's the percents. They, they could ask you about that, but in this one, it was just basically half-life, how long to get there. On this one, steady state, 20 hours. So, all right, guys, so those are just some questions I thought they were uh, when I was going through my stuff. Hope it was helpful.